As a kid, you never really think about what could go wrong when doing your dream job. It's just something we end up finding out when we grow up. Okay, so that was it. Kind of one dimensional space monster <laughs> story. But maybe there's a twist, you never know. Maybe, maybe the monster happened to be his ex-lover that landed on a planet in a previous mission and uh, just happened to turn into a monster. I don't know. But anyways, hope you liked my country accent in the beginning, it's the best I could do. So let's take a look at this clip here, which I probably added the most effects on from M Film Look. And I'm gonna press option and drag. That's gonna copy my clip here. I'll open my inspector window and I'm going to turn off M Film Look just so I can show you the before and after. So let me go to my crop and, uh, whoops, go a little bit slower there. So you can see it was, it's stock footage that is in a log profile. And so what I added was a letterbox. I added some chromatic aberration that you can see in, in the corners. Uh, that helps to um, bring in the viewer's eyes and kind of was, um, I thought, a good choice for this, this scene or this shot. And then added the flare, added some, some contrast as well as a LUT, and it was incredibly easy to do. So let me run through how I went about doing that. So with M Film Look, all you're gonna do is go into your effects window and you can either drag it or double click. I'm gonna double click here and you'll notice you have a panel that pops up. This is what is really nice about this plugin. It gives you easy access to everything in the plugin with a click of a button and it's all easy icons to understand once you know the plugin. And so let me run through it here. So if you have your inspector window open, you can see that uh, there are actually a lot of options. And if I double click this top uh, window right here, it'll expand for us. So the first thing we would do here is convert this log footage to a Rec. 709 color space. And all that means is adding contrast and saturation back into your image. What's nice about M Film Look is it comes with some uh, quite a lot of different options of log to Rec. 709 normalization LUTs. Uh, and that is gonna convert your log footage to a Rec. 709 color space. Uh, you can do that. You can convert your footage with these normalization LUTs or you can do it manually if you just wanna add contrast and saturation manually, but it is so easy and saves you a lot of time just to use one of these options. And actually you can go into custom and if you have a normalization LUT from your camera manufacturer, you can just bring that in and use that as well. But this gives you lots, lots of options. So for example, let's just try something like, um, uh, this black magic 4k film look and I believe this was shot uh, With black magic. I'm not exactly sure. I probably should know that but I think that looks fine Next thing you'll do is is adjust the white balance and we can use the on-screen control panel here Or you can just go in here and, and do it as well So let me just show you if I click on this what you want to do is if you have a gray card or a white card you will select that in the shot and then it will uh, color, it'll make your white balance correct. So here I will go about selecting maybe this white light right here and that is going to bring it to a neutral tone. It really didn't do too much because the shot is, uh, white balance is correct for the most part. You can also go in here as well and that's set. Then you can move on to the level section. This is gonna give you options to adjust your highlights, your, your mid-tones, uh, add contrast. So generally, it's pretty easy, if, especially if your shot is lying center on the Luma waveform here. 
You can just add a bit of contrast and that's gonna expand your dynamic range and uh, give more of that uh, the contrast back in your shot there so it's that easy and that looks good we're actually going to add a LUT later on so I don't want it to be too contrasty uh, but you have options on screen as well so if I click this I didn't even have to have the inspector open and I can adjust my uh, my gamma my midtones my my whites as well make them a little brighter if I would like and uh, and yeah very easy to use there so you have levels, if I want to go down to basic adjustments, or I can click here, you have options for color temperature, I can swing this. If I want it to be a cooler look, um, I can just swing this to the left, a little bit warmer, swing it to the right, that easy. I may actually want it a little cooler here. And I will just bring up the saturation a tad, but in the basic adjustments panel, you'll notice that we have vibrance, which is really nice because that'll keep skin tones looking good. And it will also raise the saturation on the lowest, uh, least saturated parts in your image. So let me just bring this up a little bit. And actually I may decrease the saturation uh, simultaneous with increasing the vibrance. The sharpness in M-Film look is really nice because as you know, using the sharpness in Final Cut Pro, if you go above, uh, gosh, I think it's like three, it looks horrendous. I don't know why anyone would ever go, even above 10 is a lot. But the nice thing about M-Film look is it, it really is uh, intelligently designed and gives a lot of contrast and detail to those edges. So I'm gonna maybe just bring it up a little bit. And here's something that's really nice and unique to M-Film look. We have options for off-screen flares. And all you have to do would be click on it here. You can also click on it there. And you'll notice that you can move it around if you want. So I can just grab this and, and move it wherever. On screen, you can adjust the intensity. So maybe I'll lower this here. And uh, what I could do, I can either make it off screen, which I kind of like, or I can track it onto this by using keyframes. So how I would do that is, let me start at the beginning here, and I'll click manual. We'll click both keyframes and move it into position. All I'm gonna do is skip maybe 10 or so frames and move. 10 or so frames and move. There we go. And if you're wanting an option to track flares or, or light leaks and stuff like that, M-Flare uh, is a fantastic plugin for that. So you can use M-Flare simultaneously with M-Film Look. And M-Flare is actually one of my favorite plugins. I know I'm kind of biased now, but M, M Flare 2 is awesome. It is amazing. Uses a Mocha tracker, which is an industry standard. It's, it's a beaut. So let's take a look at that. It's just something we need to find out. So that looks nice. It it's, appears to be tracked to it, and we can adjust that as well. So in your uh, panel, you can adjust the hue if you'd like, which let's keep it at blue. You can address the intensity, um, the scale, the rotation, but there's also tons of presets. So if we scroll through, we see we have lots of options here. And I like Icy Glimmer. I think that looks pretty nice for this situation. And, uh, and something we can do to make it look a little more realistic is add a little bit of flicker. Maybe in this situation, because the light is stagnant and isn't something that has something moving in front of it, we won't do too much. But uh, let, me, let me do a lot just to show you real quick. So let's play out. Just just some you see that? Maybe let me render this real quick. Okay. Just see? something we need to find out. You see how it flickers? It's just something we... But in this situation, I, I wouldn't do that. I would maybe bring it down a bit, keep the speed right there. So we added, uh, we color corrected our shot, added a bit of contrast. We added some sharpness, um, easily added a off-screen flare or on-screen flare here. And we have our LUTs, which is next. The nice thing is M, M Film Look comes in a great layout. You have color correction, then you move on to 
some some add-on stuff like off-screen flare, and then you have some some finalization type uh, effects, which we'll go over. So we have our, our presets, our, our LUTs. All we have to do is click on it here, and you can actually import all of your LUTs from MLUT, if you have any LUTs from MLUT, by just clicking this, and it will have you import all of those. Also, you can buy more LUTs, which is gonna take you to the Motion VFX website, and you can import your own LUTs. Uh, so a nice feature that I like is you can create your own categories. So maybe I have a set number of LUTs that are great for documentaries. I can click new category, I can type in documentary, blah, blah, add it, and now I have easy access to the LUTs that I want. So it makes it really, really quick to, to grade, to add uh, a lookup table to your footage. Also, you can click favorites. So say I like Amrita and Antithesis. I just click the favor button. Now you can find all your favorites here, which is incredibly nice. So let's go through and let's find something that would work for this situation. Um, we are going to, we're just gonna go with this. I wanna keep moving, and so I think that's fine. And I'm actually gonna go back up and add a little bit more vibrance here. There we go. Awesome, that looks great. So going back down, we have chromatic aberration, and this is going to uh, simulate the, an effect where light color, light wavelengths go through your lens and they hit different focal points at separate times. So those color wavelengths kind of are separated because of that, and that causes kind of an RGB uh, effect around your shot. And so we can simulate that here, and you'll notice if I just crank this up, let's click on it. If you click on it, then your on-screen um, selection will be shown. And you can also decrease the intensity here as well if you'd like. Um, there we go. And so you can kind of see here, I can actually bump this up even more just to make it dramatic. But it really guides your, your viewer's eyes in, and uh, the reason I chose it for this shot is because He's kind of contemplating and thinking about his past. Uh, maybe I'm adding a story to something that is not, doesn't really have much of a story, but I think it helps to, to show that he's in his head and I quite like it. I think it looks pretty good. So we added that. We also have options for distortion, which I actually used in this shot right here. If I go ahead and turn off distortion, um, oh, I did not. So it, all that's going to do is give you kind of either a fisheye look or something like when you're using anamorphic lenses and you have that, that slight squeeze and things are rounded a little bit, it's going to give you that option. And then also you can go the other way and get more of a wide angle look for the most part. Um, but for this shot, I left it as is. So you have that option. Next, you have lens blur, which is probably one of my favorite features in, in Film Look because this allows you to guide your viewer's eyes even more in your shot. And I didn't choose this, uh, I didn't use this for this shot. Let me show you a shot that I did use the lens blur, which is right here. So let's head down. So if I just click this off and on, you can kind of see what it does here. And what I like about this feature in, in Film Look is it's not like a typical Gaussian blur. It truly looks like an out of focus, um, out of focus setting. And this is bokeh, it's the bokeh bokeh setting right here, which is really nice. So all I did was click on that, make that right there. Let me close this so you can see this a, a little bit more. And I actually should select this. Okay, hit lens blur. And so I have this selected. It's as easy as dragging this in and this will give more softness. This will increase the, the range size. So if I want it to be a small um, area that is clear and sharp, I'll just bring this in. And uh, I don't want that actually. And then this is the softness. And also you can do it in here too, which is very easy. And you can change the aspect of it. So if you want something that's say, uh, kind of a, what would look like a narrow plane of focus, you can do so here, and it will give you kind of a sideways rectangle look. 
Uh, but I'm gonna go back to what we just had and just keep that there. Uh, the next thing we have is grain. Let's go back to the shot. And if we can use the on-screen control panel again. So we have the blur right here. We have the grain. All we have to do is select that. And you have some of the quick options. We have intensity. So I'm gonna bring up the intensity. I may lower the size a little bit. Color noise, we'll add a little bit of color into the film grain. I don't particularly like this, but if you're going for like a, a kind of a TV style uh, grain noise, then I would uh, swing it to the right. But I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. Let's go down in our inspector window as well. So um, I'm going to increase the intensity maybe a little bit just so it's more pronounced. I'm not sure how well you can see it in this, in this stream, but we have just an easy vignette. We can go ahead and click that and adjust where the vignette is, can decrease the intensity. I'm not gonna use that here. We can increase the softness really easily. Uh, once again, it's as easy as clicking on and off and you know if something is not enabled when it is gray. And to get that on-screen bit, all you have to do is click that. So it'll show blue and then you can adjust it on the screen. And last but not least is the wide assortment of letterboxes. And we didn't just add one, we have a huge, huge list. I didn't actually didn't even know there were this many types of, um, of uh, aspect ratios for, for widescreen. But if you wanted to make the adjustment on screen, you can either click here or like I just mentioned, you can click on the panel and then it just, it just easily snaps to the next one. It gets you, uh, gives you a nice view of, uh, of where to go. But I would normally keep it at 235.1 CinemaScope. I think that's how you read it. Um, I just know it is CinemaScope. Okay, and now I'm gonna show you an example of kind of correcting white balance, um, a shot that has incorrect white balance. So we have this shot here. Obviously, it is not looking great. If we bring up our scopes by pressing Command-7, you'll see most of the shot is swinging towards the magenta and the blue. But we will fix that with M-Film Look. So let's open up our effects panel. Let's type in M-Film Look. We'll double click here. And let's open our inspector window. Control Command-1. Okay, so this actually has quite a bit of contrast already and we're gonna add a LUT so we will kind of uh, Lee we won't convert this to rec 709 because it's pretty close to rec 709 I'll show you how to do it manually actually so let's bring up our white balance picker it's as easy as selecting finding something that's white and selecting here and you'll notice boom it brings it back to a good level for us brings back the warmth takes out some of that magenta and blue that easy and so we can open our levels here. I can click, maybe lower my gamma a little bit. My midtones have a little bit more contrast. Select this on, nice. So we have this, let's go into our basic adjustments and I may add a little bit of vibrance to bring some saturation back into the least saturated areas. And then I'm just gonna lower the overall saturation a bit. And the color temp looks fine. I may keep the sharpness. The nice thing about this shot is it's very bright. So we can add a flare. And that actually, right away, that flare fits pretty perfectly. It's a, it's a really great, great color. So let's select it. Make sure I have M Film Look selected. And see, there's an example. So this, the, the flare itself is too bright, but we know that's gonna be the case. It's a flare. Let me turn this off. And uh, I'm gonna keep this off screen this time because there's nothing on screen that would kind of need this bright light. So let's keep it off screen right here and I will maybe keep the intensity, it looks fine, but you'll notice it's moving like that. That's because it's in an automatic setting, which is nice if maybe you want it to kind of move with the handheld motion. Here, I'm gonna change it to manual, bring it back to the position and that's gonna keep it in this position. And then like I did last time, whoops, scroll too far. Like I did last time, you can adjust the brightness of the streak. The, the color actually looks fine. So I'll leave that. And you have the, uh, the flicker. 
We want it to have a little flicker, especially because maybe there's trees outside. That'll give it a little extra something. So you'll see, gives it a tiny bit of flicker right there. Maybe I'll give it a little bit more, increase the speed and intensity. There, I think that looks really good. Next we have our LUT. And uh, like we did, all you have to do is select it, turn it on, open your, uh, your LUT preset, and you can choose whatever option you'd like. So let's go to film M, uh, M film 3 and we'll find something that works. I actually kind of like this one, broom. Let's keep looking. Okay. All right, let's try broom. Let's see, I think that one works the best with what we have going on here. Okay, and if you wanna change the intensity of the LUT2, all you have to do is drag this mix down. I may go about halfway. And we have uh, uh, aberration again. I'm not gonna turn that on here, no distortion. Lens blur, I'm gonna turn on the lens blur so it's focused on them. And let's change the aspect ratio so it is just on these two. You can adjust the uh, softness here. Maybe I'll bring it right about there. And I will uh, increase the amount of blur on the outside. Let's make sure that if they're moving, you need to keyframe it, but that looks good. Really good, guys. Turn that off and on. It was actually already, most of the outside of the frame is out of focus, but I think that adds to a little extra something something. Grain, I'm not really gonna add grain here. I don't think this is the shot for it. Uh, you can add the vignette. We're gonna leave that off as well. And I may even leave the letterbox off. But if you have a shot where you turn the letterbox on and maybe they're a little bit too high in the frame, all you have to do is lower the position offset and get it in a, uh, a great location. I think that's fine if I wanted something like that. And that's it, really quick, really, really, really quick and easy. Oops, I just turned this on. So let's look at that. Really nice. So we color corrected our shot, added some contrast, added a LUT, added the off-screen flare really easily, added a letterbox, um, added some, some blur to help focus our attention. Really easy to do, really easy to create. Next one, let me show you. Let's go up to the top. I uh, have this clip here. And I'm just gonna run through kind of fairly quick Let's uh, option in right brackets to cut and trim. And let's go ahead and drag and film look to the shot or double click. And the first thing I will do is, actually I'm not gonna convert this to Rec. 709. So we will leave this. We know that this white, this is probably white on his shirt. So we can select that and that's gonna uh, correct our white balance for us and that brought a lot of warmth back into the shot. Contrast, I'm just gonna add a bit here and I may bring down the highlights just a tad. I can adjust that later if I want, but I kinda want more of a filmic look. And in a lot of films, the highlights sit so low. They sit around like 70 IRE, even when it's a, like a bright sky. It's kind of, kind of amazing. Um, okay, so let's turn on basic adjustments. I'll turn up the vibrance a little bit and add just a little bit of sharpness into our shot here. I may swing it to the left for the color temperature. It may be too warm. And let's mess with our glare. Um, and, uh, oops, I clicked the wrong one here. So we want this to be manual, and that is because uh, if it's automatic, it'll be moving around in different places, and I wanna have the uh, a stagnant positioning. So I can select this, shows up blue, which means we can move it. So let's move it over here. Ooh, ooh, that looks good, like a typical anamorphic streak. I actually may leave that, but maybe I don't want it on his face. Let's bring it up a little bit higher. Let's try right about there. Actually, I like that. I think that may be fine as is, but you can go in here and make adjustments. Maybe I'll increase the intensity just a little bit, just a little bit brighter. Let's adjust the hue, and I'll just show you by using the on-screen controls. Nope, I like the blue, so Command-Z. And let's bring that flicker back. Gotta love that flicker. There we go. Let's see if it's too much. 
it's nice because it would be going through those these like bushes and trees so it's kind of realistic and then let's open up our uh, our LUTs that LUT looks pretty good right off right off the bat we'll go to MLUT Cine and find something that works let's see hmm that looks pretty good Ooh, that's a cool one. Nice. Oh man, I kind of like that. Even though it made it a lot cooler, I may select that and just change the color temperature a little bit. Swing it a little bit to the right. There we go. I think that looks fine. As for the lens blur, just a quick lens blur. We'll click on this. And I'm going to change the aspect ratio to be wide and just rotate this. So we'll swing it right about there. We'll bring this up and um, let's increase the softness so it's kind of more on his face. So if you notice just on the shirt, you can see what it's doing there. Kind of guiding our, our eyes into what we should be looking at, which is him, his eyes. But obviously we do that naturally. Grain, of course. Let's add some grain. Let's, I'm gonna decrease the size a little bit. Take out some of that color noise. Maybe increase the speed a little bit here. And uh, maybe I'll lower the intensity a tad. Vignette, no, I'm gonna keep it the same. Letterbox, definitely. And let's bring this down right about there. Let's take a look at that. That looks good. Let me turn this off and on so you can see what we did. And let's do this last one, which is kind of just a, a, a fun one if, if you're interested in this sort of thing. If you've ever heard of the tilt shift effect, you can use our lens blur to give your shot a, uh, a nice tilt shift effect. So all we'll do is we will click, let's go to, I thought I had, interesting, okay. So let's click it and I will go to the blur, which is this little dot. And once you get the plug in, you'll kind of get a feel for all of these. And it's just is so handy to have this on-screen control. You can easily click it. Let's expand the, uh, change the aspect. I'm going to rotate this and I will maybe increase the intensity. And let's go to the blur here. Let's decrease the range. You kind of want it to be pretty shallow. And then maybe the softness a little bit. And I'll just drag this up. And I can actually hold this and drag and really crank it, but you don't want it to be too much. So let's take a look at that. Looks good. Like a small miniature world, right? A little tilt shift. Looks like little, little baby cars. So it's that easy to make something like a tilt shift effect. Um, and then you can add what you want here. If you wanted to add your LUT, you can quickly add the LUT. If you wanted to add a flare as just an example, um, let me show you that real quick. We'll turn this on, drag this here, and maybe I'll just quickly adjust the hue because I don't want it to look like that. Just something that's a little bit more natural. Boom, flicker. Press show, intensity, add a little bit of that. Looks pretty good. It's a tilt shift with a, with a flare, miniature world with a flare coming through. And that is it guys. Also, can't believe I forgot to mention this. You can save these presets. So if I say yes, this is the exact look I want for different tilt shift videos. All I have to do is click save presets and I can save it. So I could just type in uh, tilt shift and I can create my own category. So I could maybe say um, my, my LUTs, something like that and click add. And then you'll have it here. You just click save, boom. Then you have your tilt shift. Now all you have to do is drag that on top. I can even favorite it. Now I know it's in uh, the favorite category here. Something else I forgot to mention is we have presets for you. So if 
you don't want to go through the process of using these different features, which I highly suggest you do. It's really easy to use them and, um, and it allows you to customize it based on your shot. If you don't have the time, we have tons of options that you can sh just quickly scroll through and maybe you can find one that you like. So we have different flares that are added, different aspect ratios. This is kind of an interesting one. Um, and you can just use these, whoa, I totally forgot about flashback. This would be a great one to kind of disorient you, give, give a, your viewer kind of a disorienting uh, feel in the shot. And yeah, so you have all these presets, which is really easy to use, but I highly suggest just making your own because not only is it easy to do, but it's incredibly fun, actually. The fact that there are really not too many uh, parameters, it's all the basic ones that you need, and we, you have options to adjust them on screen as well. That and the fact that everything is quality is a reason why it is one of my personal favorite plugins and i truly hope that if you do get the plugin that you'll enjoy it you can go to the motion vfx website and check it check it out more in depth keep on keep on editing guys thank you for watching